Trading Forex CFDs and spread bets on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You may lose more than your initial deposit and could be required to deposit additional funds. <laughs> Excuse me. Please ensure you fully understand the risks and take care to manage your exposure. So let's get on tonight with our class on Japanese candlesticks. Now, it all started out way back in the 17th century in China. I'm oh, sorry, I can't even read my own notes here. In Japan, and it was the the charting or the use of candlesticks was developed by the rice traders. And it eventually moved over to the Western world, but it wasn't really well adapted because it was a complex time-consuming process of putting these candles on charts. And you got to remember, up until just you know, 15 or 20 years ago, we didn't have computerized charts. We were hand charting. So when I first started trading, we were sitting there and putting marks on charts. So it was a lot easier to do a bar chart. You know, there were some guys who did candlestick charting. And, you know, in those days, you, you know, you're only following an asset or two. There was no online trading. And the markets moved a lot slower. But all your charting was by hand. Today, uh, candlesticks have become the big buzzword for online traders and Forex traders um, because they are a popular technique. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people think it's all about just the reds and the greens. And this is where we run into a serious problem because the reds and greens were back in the old days, the black and whites are not indicators of what you should do. And when you see a candlestick chart full of lots of green, you think, oh, I should pay trade that asset to go up. And you see lots of red, and you think I should trade that asset to go down. Because we're, you know, we're all human beings. So we all respond psychologically to these colors. <clears throat> but the fact is, you can use orange and pink if you want. You can use purple and, you know, and gold. Whatever colors you know, as long as you know what's the bullish color and what's the bearish color. But candlesticks don't have, doesn't have much to do with the color of the candle. They help you to see who's controlling the market, but that's just about it. Now, each candlestick represents a period of time and how price moved in that period of time. So if you're looking at a one-hour chart, each candlestick represents one hour of price movement. If you're looking at a one day chart, each candlestick represents the entire day. So if we were looking at a one hour chart, what we would do is the beginning of that one hour, we would draw a line across at the open. Actually, let me get a better color on here. We would draw a line across at the open. Then at the end of that one hour, we would draw a line across at the close. We put a dot at the highest price that that asset reached in that one hour and a dot at the lower lowest price that asset reached. We would connect those dots to the open and the close. And then we would fill in the body of the candle. Now, if the close was lower than the open, in other words, you step down the ladder, that is a bearish time frame. And therefore, you would color the candle in with whatever color you're using for your bearish notes. In this case, it's red. The opposite candle, the open was here, the close was there, so you stepped up the ladder. So that's a bullish time frame, and therefore you would fill in your candle with the green. These long shadows at the end are referred to as wicks or shadows. This is the area between the high and the and the opener close and the low and the opener close. Now, what candlesticks are all about are about the shot size and shape of the candle and about the size and shape, well not the size, but the length of the wicks. Has very little to do with whether it's green or red. That has a little bit, but is not the overall consuming factor. It's the body of the candle and where it is in relationship to the trend and how it's responding to the previous candle 
and how it proceeds or what the next candle is doing. So just happening to see red, red, and red doesn't tell you that asset is coming down. Okay. What you want to do is be able to read what the candlesticks or the bodies of the candles are telling you. And this is where the misconception comes in. There's too many traders just think it's the reds and the greens <clears throat> and not the size and the shape of the candle. <clears throat> so the first part of a candle tells us a story. Now, if we go back to the old days that I was talking about before when we did hand charting, the bullish candle was left un unfilled in or uncolored because we do it by hand. And the, bullet, the bearish candle was filled in with the side of your pencil, making it black. So in this chart, this is from the bulls and the bears, the, the whites being bullish or equal to the green, and the red, the blacks being bearish or open equal to the reds today. Doesn't matter, but lots of things you'll read will talk about black and white candles. So just keep that in mind. The white candle, because it's on a background, or the uncolored in candle is the bear, bullish, and the colored in candle is the bearish. And there are six stories that these candlesticks tell us. And it's the overall battle between the bulls and the bears, so you can see who's owning or controlling the market. Now, if you think of it as a game, okay, or we'll talk about it sometimes as a tug of war. But if we think of it as a soccer game, okay, candlestick number one shows us that the bears, I'm sorry, that the bulls were in control from the open to the close because it opened lower, ended up closed higher. And that's why we have the white body candle. So at some point, the bears pulled it down to a low, but couldn't hold on to it. And the bulls pulled it up to high, but it, it closed pretty close to the high, but not at the high. But it was a, the bulls controlled that ball during most of the game. Number two is the exact opposite. Okay. That's a bearish candle. Now, the rest of them after this tell you a story about what happened in that time frame, but it's not a bullish or a bearish story. It's about the size of the candle and the wicks. So in number three, we have very small body candles. It doesn't matter if it's a black or a white or a red and green. What it tells us is that neither team, neither side had complete control or had any control of the ball that period. They made no headway at all. Yes, it popped up a little, so you end up with a white, or it popped down a little, and you ended up with a black. But if you notice, the wicks are pretty small, and the movement was small. So these small body candles with small wicks are telling you that nobody was in control at that moment. Number four, similar, we have small bodies, but we have long wicks going downward. So that tells us that sometime the bears dominated, but only had it for a short period of time. It could not hold on to it. And the bulls were able to pull the, the ball back all the way to where it, close to where it started. So at some point, somebody had a, a good play, but that was the end of it. Number five is the exact opposite. At some point, the bulls dominated the market during that time frame, but lost it. And they ended up closing fairly close to where they opened. Nobody was in control at the end. Number six is we had a complete tug of war with no, nobody having any control. Okay. Now, remember, it doesn't tell us much about trading, but it tells us the story of the bulls and the bears, which is inevitably the most important story of the marketplace. Now, once we can tell that story, as you notice, we talked about the bodies, the candles, and the wicks. Well, there are certain candles that have certain shapes that have importance to the marketplace. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Marabuzu. Does anybody notice anything about the Marabuzu here? It's got no wicks. 
Okay, it could be a shorter body, it can be a very long body, but it's got absolutely no wicks. So what that tells us is that from the very, and the bullish marabuzu, the green one, that the bulls dominated that entire segment. In other words, the time that market started that segment until the very close, the bulls were pushing that price up. And the only reason to stop where it was because that one hour time period or that one day or that 30 minute time was over. But the bulls never rested for a second and they were still in complete control at the end of that session. The opposite is true with the bearish Marabuzu. So it's an important candle to look at. The Marabuzu can mean a continuation of an existing bullish trend or a complete reversal of a current downtrend. So we always have to be aware of candlesticks and where they appear in trends and how qualified that trend is. But in this case, when we're coming off of a downtrend and it's moved over to some congestion, and then all of a sudden we see this bullish marabuzu, that sounds that downtrend is over and we're moving into a very strong uptrend. Okay. The opposite is true with the bearish marabuzu. Okay. Remember, there's always a bullish and a bearish scenario, but it's important to see where it comes in the trend and what the quality of that trend is in relationship to it. Now, spinning tops. Spinning tops are similar to the one that we saw in the posterior, the bulls and the bears. They're candlesticks with long upper shadows and long lower shadows and a small real body. So they look just like a top. Okay. One long shadow represents the reversal of sorts. Spinning tops represent in, indecision. That means the markets, because you have the wick up and the wick down, and it ends up where it is, the markets are completely undecided. They're waiting for something to give them direction. Then we go to even one that's more defined, and that is one you hear about talked about often, and that's called doji. Now, doji, in the true definition, is this candle here. Short wicks, but no movement between the open and the close. Not mo no movement, but the open and the close were at the same price. Well, that's possible in something like oil or a stock, but it's very rare to have it in, especially a commodity, I mean, a currency, because currencies move in such small fractions. So if the euro was opened at 123.6674 and closed at 123.6672, that's a thousandth of a point, one, you know, one pip apart. And that is acceptable in a doji. But we want it almost non-existent. Now, dojis convey a sense of indecision or tug of war between buyers and sellers. Prices move above and below the, the opening level during the session, but close at or near the opening level. The result is an ultimate standoff. Dojis appear quite often. It's more surprising than you would think. And again, we always have to see where they appear in a trend especially if you're looking at the price, if you have a trend like that, and right as price moves up to that trend line, you get the doji, but well, actually it's telling you that the markets aren't sure whether they're gonna push through that trend or, or bounce off of that trend. And they're, they're trying to figure it out. But then a lot of times you get dojis that don't mean anything. So you have to always look at where a doji is in relationship to the trend. And the preceding, candlesticks okay. because a lot of times you'll see buyers say you have the bulls in the market the buyers push the price way up and the next time frame you get a doji that doesn't mean the markets are indecided it means that the buyers just bought out at, at the prior session and they're just waiting they're sitting on the sidelines and trying to make a decision but it doesn't mean the price is going to fall so it's always important to look at dojis in relationship to the trend. Now, before turning from the singles to multiple candlestick patterns, there's a few general guidelines we need to cover. Now, we're talking about a lot of stuff that can get you completely lost, 
make you run away and hide and say, all of this is way too confusing to me. But the fact is, there are 32 different types of patterns or candlesticks that you have to know for using candlestick patterns. Some are real basic, a single candlestick pattern. But really, a single candlestick pattern doesn't tell you that much. There's two uh, patterns that, that use two candlesticks, and then there's patterns that require three. Now, I've given you lots of handouts because none of us, and I've been trading for a long time, none of us remember the names. None of us remember all the definitions. What we do know is how to recognize them when we see them in a, in a, on a chart and understand by looking at them what they're trying to tell us. And the position of those candles also. But you can get lost in all of that. That's why I say I gave you the handouts so that you can look at that. One of my favorite positions, and so you understand what a position is, is called a harami. Now, a harami is a two candlestick pattern. Harami in Japanese means pregnant. And if you notice, we have a single candlestick here, and it could be a bullish or a bearish candlestick, but the next candle, the next time frame, is fully incorporated. The highs, the lows, and the body is fully incorporated within the body, not the wicks, not the stem, but within the body of the previous candle. So what is it? It's like a pregnant woman and the baby inside of her. The baby is fully contained within her body, not above her neck and not below her waist, just in her body. And this is a very precise placement. It doesn't matter whether it's the lower or, or the upper part of the body in the candlestick. It's got to be in that body. Now, there's a couple different interpretations. The general rules are as long as it's contained within that body, it doesn't matter if they're the same bullish or bearish can, you know, um, from one to the next. My rule of thumb is that the, the baby candle needs to be the opposite color of the mother candle. A harami is one of the most common candlestick patterns you'll come across. So it's important to recognize, to understand what it means, and to understand its limitations. Harami is a two-session reversal pattern. It's made up of two candlesticks and implies that the price is about to turn. It is indicated by a small body of the opposite color, completely contained in the body of the previous session. Now, some people who like to stretch the rules say it's not essential for the two candles to be opposite colors. I say it must be. But this tends to give a more reliable signal. Now, I'm only pointing out the harami because you'll see on those handouts I gave you, there are lots of two candlestick patterns. Harami is just an easy one to understand. But once you see them and recognize them, you should know what they're trying to tell you about the price on a chart. So what have we learned so far? How to draw a candlestick on a chart. What the story of the candlestick is trying to tell us. The explanation of the shapes and the sizes, the formation. The position, we talked about dojis, haramis, tops and shadows, the bulls versus the bears. We skipped over the hammers and hanging men. Okay. Now, we can go on and talk about, now the chart that's up on the screen, I didn't make up, I, I took it off the internet. Now, and the only reason I'm telling you that is because somebody was cute and they called them lonesome cowboys, which I call single candlestick pattern. They called them two for tango for the, the double or two candlestick patterns, they call it three musketeers for the triple candlestick pattern. Now, I've put all of these into your handouts, and there are a lot of these out there. And like I said, you're going to get lost. You're going to be saying, hey, this is too much. Okay. Now, the ones that have are that are really important to you, the ones that really give you clear cut understanding of the market, fall in the triples three candlesticks, one after another, that form a specific pattern, especially three black crows, three inside up, three inside down, and three white soldiers. When you see these, you should react to them immediately. Okay. Then you also hear, now, there, we also have what's called bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. These are engulfing candles. 
they mark market reversals. Okay. It means when the next candle fully engulfs the previous candle in the opposite color. Now, again, I keep saying this because I know when I first learned candlesticks, I was completely lost. And it was over. You know, here we have bullish tweezers. We have bearish tweezers. What are the explanations? But the fact is you just have to learn to recognize them on a chart. And you'll find that this happens fairly quickly. So let me stop here and take you over to some charts. And let's take a look at what you're, what we're looking for on these charts. So hold on a second. Let me pop up a chart for you here. Okay. So we, what we have here is just my standard work chart, your US dollar, what I use for class, and a one-hour chart. So each one of these candlesticks will represent one hour of trading. and we have them in red and green. Nothing complicated. I mean, if I wanted to make them orange and blue, as long as I knew which were bearish and bullish, that's perfectly fine. Doesn't make a difference. And in fact, you'll see on some places where that's exactly what you get because the charting company matched the, the bullish bearish colors to their company colors. No, it's a little bit confusing, but as long as you know which one is which, you're perfectly fine. But now I just took them back. Now, candlesticks allow you to see a lot of information. Now, the colored lines that are on my chart were not drawn on here tonight for tonight's class. They are Fibonacci levels and support levels from well, quite some time ago brought forward. But look at that, as they're dropped on the chart, you can see all of the relationship to those levels with candlesticks and the wicks, the bodies, and the um, and where the candlesticks have moved. So you can see lots of information by looking at an overall candlestick chart. If you're not tied up just looking and counting how much red you see or how much green you see. Because here, look at this, we were, this is a very nice downtrend. from here to here, but my eye sees way more green than I see red in a downtrend. Okay. But what we're looking at is, look at all of these tiny little body candles. Okay. Uh, and here we have a doji form right there on a support level. And look at what's happening. We have all of this market congestion because the market is completely undecided. But then the market makes up their decision and actually, what do we have here? It's very, very strange, but we have three black crows because I clicked on the colors in the wrong. Hold on a second. Let me fix this for us. Okay, sorry, I, the candles were just reversed here. So we have what's called three black crows. What is it? Black is from the black, the, the, the name came from back in the black and white days, but black was what? Black was bullet bearish. So in this case, we have three red candles continuing down and the three candles are larger than the previous price move. And this is telling you that we have a very strong downtrend signal and it's going to continue in this downtrend pattern. This is a very good clue to enter a, a, a sell position. Okay. But you'd have to recognize that candlestick pattern. But we don't want to dwell on that tonight because looking for all the different candlestick patterns could take us a long time. But we can see the difference. We can see the star positions. We can see the dojis. We can see the haramis. Okay, we can see the engulfing signals. You have to learn to be able to recognize these and when you see them, understand what they're trying to tell you. So here is a very simplistic chart of the US dollar Swiss franc, which is unimportant. But at this point, we were looking for a bullish, a very, we were waiting at this point 
for a very strong bullish candle, which we got right after this candlestick, which then verified or confirmed the continued uptrend because what happened was we had our trend line and price broke right through that trend line and continued upward. Okay, It's a very simplistic start. Here, we weren't looking at patterns. We were looking at reactions. Then over here, we see a little bit more complex where we're using our candlestick, our swing highs and our swing lows to build chart panels. And we're looking at very precise patterns and candles to give us type, some type of a buy or a sell. We can see the congestion here. We see the, the no wicks on the top. And we're looking for specific information. Here we go to a very simplistic chart also. And we're looking at our support and our major resistance zones. We're looking for those wicks and where those bodies connect. And, but you have to build your candlesticks to understand and know what they're telling you and then how you'd want to use them, incorporate into your trading. But now all of you are sitting back and saying, Barry, this is complicated. This is time consuming. I work all day and I only have a couple hours in the evening. I can't do all this charting and track down and find all these patterns. Well, the fact is, thank God for computers. Because since candlesticks have sets of rules and very precise definitions of what they are, we have ways to find these candlestick patterns. So we can find a script or a piece of software that will find us the candlestick patterns. And like here we have one on our, our from trading view. And now I have a big mess on my charts, right? Well, the fact is we can then clean it up. Uh oh. Why isn't it giving me? There we go. Okay. Now, it's giving me a choice of virtually every type of major candlestick pattern. It's giving me a choice of which ones I want to see. We can turn them off and on side, which ones are important to us. Okay. What colors we want to see them in. We can see what, how we want, where we want the words. Tell us below the bar, above the bar, the top to the bottom. We can tell us to put a star next to it, or we can tell it to type out the words. We can do whatever we want to do. So let's turn most of these off because it's just too much garbage on the charts. We can even see the colors we want to see them in so it's not too confusing for us. And we can now see all the bullish engulfing. Now, remember, the only ones that really matter to you are the ones that are happening in the present time. But once you can eliminate yourself from having to track them down, you've already got the name. All you have to do is real quickly look on your charts, on your little handouts, and see, oh, there's a bullish engulfing. What's that tell me? What am I supposed to do? Okay. And you can see it right on your charts. That's one easy way if you're using TradingView. But just about any chart service you use has that available. Then we've even gone a little bit farther. If we come over here to investing.com. If you just click on investing.com and go up to click on technical analysis, click on candlesticks, it does the same thing. And you can just use your mouse right over there, and it'll tell you the, the pattern. It'll tell you the explanation. It'll tell you how reliable it is. At, but it also gives you a choice, again, to customize. Do you want to only see 15 or 30-minute time frames? Do you want to see only completed patterns or beginning patterns? Bullish or bearish? How high of a quality do you want to see for that asset? Okay. And then it's going to listen down, and we're going to see when that happens. So this is a 30-minute chart. So this pattern took place over the last five candles. So that pattern took place over this afternoon. Okay. Then we had the three inside up, which took place 
over 13 candles in a 30 minute time frame. So it's a little bit too late. That happened at 8.30 GMT time this morning. This one, So nothing is happening right now. As you know, the markets are slow this time of day. But that's another easy way. And you don't have to use the, the, the charts from Investor.com. Use whatever charts you're using. But no longer you can just look over here, see where the pattern is, because it'll be the same pattern no matter what chart you're looking at. And then just copy it onto your charts. Then they've even made it a little bit easier for us today. And if you click on candlestick patterns under their technical analysis button, you can then, you can also customize what assets you're watching. So as you can see here, I got the US dollar, the pound, Japanese yen, gold. I've got Bitcoin, Ethereum, the uh, Euro JPY and Bitcoin US dollar. And I've already set up exactly what I want to see. And it's just giving, keeping me a list of every asset that I've selected, where the patterns are. So we can see it right now in um, Ripple Bitcoin, we just had a three inside up in the last candle. Bitcoin US dollar, we just had a bullish engulfing that took place over the last two candles. It's telling that asset should be bouncing up. And if we click on the line here and open it up, it's giving us all the information we could possibly want. It's explaining the pattern, how reliable it is, what it is, when it appeared on the charts. And we can just click right here and go directly over to the chart and see that asset. And see exactly what's happening. Now, isn't the miracle of computerized charts a wonderful thing? All of that stuff you were worried about recognizing on your charts has now gotten easy. So you have all the cheat sheets and all the things I gave you. Now you just have to start learning how to use it. Now, candlesticks alone are not, they're a system, but they're not a strategy. They tell you something about price movement, but you need to combine them with other tools. So I'm going to run you a quick video that's going to give you a little bit better explanation. And then we'll see what else you need to learn tonight. So hold on, let me pop up this video that I'll share with you. And then we'll get back to talking about candlesticks.